we are back at the compost pile. Winter is finally over. And I think you're maybe getting tired of me talking about how great finished compost is, how nutrient rich finished compost is for your plants or gardens or lawns. So I think it's time to prove it to you. We're going to grow a giant pumpkin in that pile of finished compost. We do get a really good look here at the three piles of compost, the three stages of compost. So this is uh, the previous fall's leaves. These are only five months old. Uh, this needs to be flipped again. It's got current day food scraps in it, a whole bunch of coffee. This will get flipped up and moved around. This is the pile of compost from the first video that I did on how to make compost. So this is now a year and a little bit old. So it's almost ready to use. I will flip that again once or twice and then this will become usable. And then over here, I have a giant pile of finished compost. This is absolutely perfect, ready to use finished compost. This is all between three and five years old. This is all perfectly broken down, ready to use compost. So a safe estimate in this pile, there's probably 2,500 bags of leaves that have broken down. There is multiple trailer loads of coffee grounds in here um, that have broken down and mixed together. So there's a lot of nutrients in here. I'm really interested to see how big of a pumpkin we can grow out of this pile. The plan now is to organize this up, make some room here. These giant pumpkin plants grow huge. So I wanna take this year's compost, put that off to the side, mix it up, get it going. Um, the one-year-old compost from the first video, we'll put that off to the side, let it sit there. We'll see it break down. And then the big job will be to move this pile out into the open moor where there's full sun, lots of room for this plant to grow. We'll get it mixed up, cleaned up, sitting there. And then I'm going to start a seed inside right now. And then we'll bring that little seedling out in a couple weeks when the weather's great, the risk of frost is gone. And it's going to be on its own out here all summer. And we're gonna see how big we can push this pumpkin with only water and the compost. No fertilizers, no cheating, just the compost. We'll see how much nutrients it can get out of that pile and how big we can grow a pumpkin. So I'm going to start my seeds before they go into the compost pile just to be safe and make sure I have a good germination rate. It's much easier to do that indoors in a controlled setting. Pumpkin seeds are fairly simple to start. I like to soak them for about six hours beforehand. Here's our seeds first. I should show you this. This seed is from a 2,500 pound pumpkin. So these are pretty good seeds. And uh, this is a beautiful orange pumpkin. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna put in there yet, but I just wanna have a backup plan. Um, this from a, it's only 1200 pounds, uh, but beautiful shape and color. So I'm going to take the seeds. This is a 2500 pound pumpkin seed. I put the number on it just in case they get mixed up. You could use a couple different water glasses as well. And they do look different. These are smaller seeds. So we'll be able to sort them before it's planting time. So we've got them in the water. I like to put a little bit of humic acid in. This is not necessary at all. I'll just like a little drop in there that they can soak in for the six hour soak. And you can soak them for a couple hours, it's fine. It doesn't have to be six hours. It just helps get that moisture into the seed to start the germination process a little bit quicker than if you just put them in damp soil. So we'll let them soak here. In the meantime, I'll get the soil prepped for the pots that I'm going to start them in under the grow lights and heat mats. So we're back. I've been like nine or 10 hours since I soaked these seeds. I was slow getting back, but that's fine. You can get away with 12 hours soak time on these. Um, I have my pots set up. I'm gonna go with pretty big pots here. These are one gallon pots because I'll probably have them inside for two weeks. I, I have to definitely get past the uh, last frost date which for us is still a couple weeks away. So I wanna go with a big enough pot. These giant pumpkins are very aggressive, uh, big rooting system on them. So I wanna give them a little bit of space here for the two weeks that they're going to be here. We have our labels done up so that I can keep these uh, in order. So I like to just open up maybe a one inch deep area, my finger, grab our seed, I just put it in sideways and flat. And lastly, we have the 2,500 pound seed. So I'm just using like a pro mix, we call it here. It's a peat based potting medium, growing medium. Um, use whatever you want, but I like to keep it a little bit damp and I'll put a little bit of water on these, but I don't want them too, too wet. So I use this seed setup for all of my seeds starting in the spring. It's pretty simple, but kind of mimics the earth 
Um, we have the grow light up here, just an LED grow light, gives off some heat from above. And then these are just basic cheap grow mats, these heat pads. So quickly, just the key to this setup that I like is timers. I have both of these on timers. So the grow light turns on early, early in the morning and runs for about 14 hours. And just before the grow light comes off, these heat mats turn on with the timer and warm from the bottom. So it kind of mimics the earth with the heat from the sun during the day and then the ground temperature at night. And I have really good success rate with everything garden vegetables, like 95%. So if you're looking for a setup, this works really, really well with the timers. So the key with grow lights is to keep them very close to your plants, very close to your soil so you can get that heat off of them. Uh, the new LED lights, they don't give off a lot of heat, so you can get away with getting them very close to your plants and getting the maximum light and you're gaining that heat from them. So somewhere around there is pretty good. Uh, you don't get leggy long plants either, the closer your lights are. And these LEDs are really nice because they aren't hot to the touch. So that should be good to go. Um, got them close to the light, lots of heat there, nice warmth, perfect temperature. Uh, these actually crack open pretty quick, so we could have uh, some pumpkins shooting up here in three or four days. So I'll get the camera back on when I see some life and then we'll start this process of growing a giant pumpkin in a giant pile of compost. So we have to make some room around this compost pile. This is the pile that we want to grow that giant pumpkin in. I have to get it out in the open where there's lots of space to grow a giant pumpkin. This is our current year compost here and I just picked up a ton of coffee grounds from the coffee shop. So. I'm gonna move this pile further that way where it can be active and worked on this year. And then we'll hide this pile from the original video somewhere over there. It can just sit and break down. And then we'll get the big pile out in the open here where we've got lots of sunlight, uh, lots of area for this vine to grow. So that's the plan now. I'm gonna go get the bobcat and start moving some compost. So that's about half the pile now flipped over. I'm going to go and get the trailer load of coffee, back it up here, hand shovel it out, spread the coffee kind of evenly over this, then cover it over with the remaining compost. And uh, then we can get to the main event, getting that big pile of finished compost over here, ready for the pumpkin. That is a very large pile of compost. It always gets so much bigger when you flip it over. You get a lot of air in there, oxygen. Uh, that'll slowly drop down too. Um, but yeah, lots of coffee in there, lots of leaves. So now we've got that other pile, I have to move it. This is the original pile of leaf compost from the first video that we did on how to make compost. So it's really close to being done. I could almost mix it in with the compost that we're going to use to grow the pumpkin in. I said I'd take the video right to the end and I will. So I'm going to push it over there, flip it one more time. This is like really, really close to being fully broken down. So I'll park it over there, let it break down a little bit more and then that will free up a lot of space now for the main event. So this is a really good look here. This is six month old compost. So that's what you can expect for breakdown after six months. And then over here, we have a year and six months. So one year, six months, big difference here with that extra year. So this is pretty much complete, needs a little bit more time, but it's very close. So now the big question, where to put this pile? I'm going to grow the pumpkin in a pile. It would make a lot of sense to spread that pile out like a flat garden area, but I think it's a bit cooler for this situation to just put the seed, put the plant right in the pile and let it grow down the pile and see how big that root system gets inside that pile. So this is it. This is going to be the growing medium or the soil that we're going to grow this pumpkin in. Uh, it is about, I think it's three, maybe four years of compost. So you saw the piles over there, one year and one year. This is three or four. So being that many years of compost mixed in here, and you've seen how many leaves we do here, I think there is 2,500 yard waste bags of leaves in here and a lot of trailer loads of coffee. So this is like, this should be really powerful. This should be like concentrate compost, absolutely pure compost, 2,500 bags of leaves. That is, I don't know, millions of leaves. So we'll hop in the Bobcat and move that pile right here into this nice open area.
So there it is. It's the pile. It's the official placement of this year's giant pumpkin growing challenge in a pile of compost. I'm still a couple of weeks away from putting the seeds in the ground. We still have a risk of frost for probably two weeks. Uh, so I'll continue to grow them indoors under the grow lights. They've actually poked up from the soil today. So we'll go take a look quickly at those. Um, but I just want to get this pile cleaned up here, uh, get it in place, let it settle a little bit. And then in a week or two, we'll start to prepare this pile and then get our seeds in there. And uh, that'll be the race. The race will begin and uh, we'll see how far we can push this giant pumpkin. So we do have just a little bit. Oh, there's the, there's the cot leaves coming through. So that one will be up tomorrow. This one's a little bit behind. Don't want to poke too much, but there's some green there. And then this one's broken through. So the three of them are up. I would say tomorrow we'll see the leaves open up and they'll be standing straight up. I'll get the light back down tight here. I want to keep those plants short and strong, not uh, leggy and, and long. So you want to keep the lights down tight and I'll get more water on them now that we don't risk rotting the seed. This soil is a little bit dry. So I'll get a little bit more water on them now that we've proven that they're growing. And uh, yeah, just try and grow some strong seedlings here for the next week or two, getting them ready to go outside. So the pumpkin plants have been growing under grow lights for about three weeks and for the last couple days I've just had them outside in part sun conditions, getting them ready for the full sun that they will have when they're growing in the compost pile. So here's the planting site, the compost pile. I did kind of flatten it out a little bit. I have to get a little bit of a flat area up there to get the plant started. Um, and then we'll just work the vines down probably this way. I haven't quite figured that out yet So I'll grab a rake right now and we'll get this smoothed off We'll get the planting hole prepared and then we will choose our plant one of these three plants is going in this compost pile I thought I'd be smart and do this early in the morning before it was too warm But the bugs have definitely found me the mosquitoes are out so our three plants, they all grew very well. They're all pretty much the same size. So now it's time to make a decision which one's going in the ground. So this plant, that was from the 2,500 pound pumpkin seed that we had. So I was always leaning towards this one because it kind of is a premium plant uh, from a premium seed. Uh, 2,500 is pretty big. The world record's like 3,000 now. So um, it's a pretty good seed. So I was always leaning towards this one going in, but these two were from that 1,200 pound pumpkin and it was like super, super nice and orange. So. I'm actually going to go with one of these. You know, a lot of these bigger pumpkins, they're a little bit ugly. I don't want to say ugly, but um, this is these came from some really nice pumpkins. So if we get a pretty big pumpkin out of this pile and it's kind of a cream colored blob, it's great and everything, but if we get a really nice big pumpkin here and it's a beautiful orange pumpkin, uh, I think that's just gonna show better. So I'm going to go with one of these two plants so this is the stage they're at. They're both pretty much the same, just starting to vine out. That's where we're at with that. So I'm really just going to flip a coin here, put one of them in. Uh, it's been a late spring. Uh, we just had frost the other, last night, I think. So um, it's late May here. So I'm in a little bit later than I would have thought. I'm going to keep these other two for backups because things can happen. Uh, wind damage, these small plants can just get blown right over. So. Uh, frost and wind are still a bit of a worry until this plant gets established so I'll keep these other two as backups in case we need them and then I'll find a home for those give them to someone that wants to grow them and uh, yeah it's time to get this in the ground which one are we gonna go with here I'm gonna grow with this one very nice roots on that I'm going to try to angle that a little bit so the vine drops. With these big pumpkins, you really want that vine to drop down quickly so that you're out of the worry of wind damage. Just like to give a little bit of a collar around the plant so I can dump some water here and it doesn't run down the hill. So it's all planted, it's on its own, out in all the elements, <laughs> the wind, the sun, the heat. Um, I'm going to put a lot of these bamboo stakes in over the summer. You'll see me staking the plant. That's about all I'm going to do is add a little bit of water and make sure I have it pinned down where we don't lose it. But that'll hold it now in place. Um, I'm only going to water it. I know this is kind of a 
you have to trust me on this one. I'm not going to be fertilizing. I'm not going to be feeding it. I'm 200 meters from our house, uh, 200 meters from electricity, water. Uh, I'm going to be basically taking water out of the river and watering it once in a while. So this plant will really be on its own. I'm not trying to fake anything here and, and juice it up with fertilizers and stuff, not on camera. This will 100% be on its own. Oh, the bugs are hungry. That plant looks pretty small up in that compost pile, but these Atlantic giant pumpkin plants are so aggressive, that vine will grow a thousand square feet around here. They're absolutely crazy to watch them grow. I'm gonna keep the camera on all summer. It's the end of May right now, and we're gonna take this plant all the way to the end of September, and we'll see how big a pumpkin we can grow in this compost pile. So stay tuned. I'll keep taking videos all summer here, and we'll see this plant's growth. Hopefully set a fruit here by early July and then watch that pumpkin grow. So thanks for watching this one. We'll have a whole bunch more on this and we'll see how big we can get this compost pumpkin.